Hey everybody, it's Steph Mischuk with Killer Sites and KillerPHP.com. In this vlog, I'm going to answer a question that was recently put to me about freelancing and dealing with clients. And um, sorry, I was just distracted by noise outside. Anyway, um, I'm going to just read what was sent to me and uh, I'll answer the question. So, um, I want to ask you about a problem that I find as a beginner in freelancing. Uh, when I developed a website for a client, I have no problems getting uh, the website up and working properly in terms of functionalities. But every time the client asks me to change the design, which I'm sure is good to his taste, things change. Things like changing the color or whatever, I, I find myself developing ugly websites. Of course, I get paid normally, but it's shameful that to have an ugly website in my portfolio as a freelancer, though it's not my fault, and the bad design, it's as a result of the client's choices. Uh, what do you think of this problem? How do I deal with it? Uh, so essentially, he's finding out that uh, uh, a lot of web design clients have absolutely no taste and uh, then they'll ask you to make changes to your your good designs and then you're stuck so uh, this is not uncommon and i i've had to contend with this as well and it comes down to two problems two reasons why this happens rather number one is because the clients are inexperienced they're probably small business owners or brand new business owners and these people tend to uh, try to do everything themselves. They really want to get their hands into everything. And that's just the nature of small business. There's kind of an entrepreneur, entrepreneurs are used to doing everything. So it's hard for them to let go. Trust me, I've been there. It's very difficult for me to let go of, uh, of letting other people write code for me, for instance, as we, as we were building and expanding, uh, given that I was a you know, I did all my own coding for many years. So I can understand that, but that's just reality. So how do you deal with that? Well, you find when you have experienced clients, more established businesses, even small, but just experienced established, there'll be more hands off because they realize that they're hiring you as a designer because you can design. Another way you can help uh, control this process is to explain to the client uh, before you get into the project the importance of colors. Just mention that, the color scheme and how this works and how if you change the colors, it might cause a problem with the layout would break it. So explain that to them. That all said, in terms of your own portfolio, when you do uh, have a working site that to you is tip top, just keep a copy for yourself and keep that copy on your own you know in your own website so you can just show people your portfolio of what the site looked like before they got their hands on it because another thing that you're going to find as you continue to work as a freelancer is that they will start messing with their site in time on their own and they may start wanting to add their own images or changing things up and slowly the site will get broken this is not always the case, but this happens quite a bit. So it's just something you have to expect, uh, something that can be managed with, uh, in terms of you managing your clients properly. And um, I would have to address that more in another video, but that's it. So keep a local copy uh, of your finished product so you can show that. Uh, try to gently explain to the to the client that the color scheme and the layout was structured in such a way to be, you know, to be visually aesthetic and that when they start adding things and changing things, they start breaking a lot of things. It may not work, may work, who knows, but at the end of the day, you are hired uh, to uh, produce a product that they want, not what you want, and, uh, you know, they're paying you. So that's pretty much it. Just don't put your name on it afterwards, you know.